Good morning. And welcome to worship at Atlanta First United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here, whether you're in the sanctuary worshiping with us today or online uh, streaming our worship. We are so grateful that you've joined us on this beautiful Lord's Day. It's beautiful outside as well as inside. And this is a very special Sunday in that it's All Saints Sunday. And that's when we remember the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, uh, giving us the roots of our faith. And also today, we celebrate the lives of those who've entered the church triumphant this past year. What a beautiful service. And we have Holy Communion in which all of us are welcome to participate later in the service as well. And this is the first Sunday of a new month. And I want you to know that this month of November, we begin a new worship series it's building a beautiful neighborhood based on uh, Mr. Rogers, the, the show that uh, Reverend Mr. Fred Rogers put together, some of his famous sayings and quotes. I know that the church had done the gospel according to uh, Mr. Rogers earlier, and so those have asked for us to re, um, revisit this, and Pastor Jasmine Smothers will be leading us in these great Sundays together. Today's sermon title is A Vision of Gratitude and Faith, and we look forward to uh, Pastor Jasmine bringing us God's Word today later in the service. In your bulletin today, you'll find several inserts, and they're all important. First, there's a prayer list. This is a praying church, and we would like for you to take that prayer list with you and pray for those who are on the list, for God's presence to be strong in their lives, for healing, for understanding, and for help. There's also a generosity card. Today and next Sunday, uh, we are celebrating our generosity, the gifts we will give to God as we estimate our giving for the next year. And it's important for the leaders of the church to know uh, as close as possible what uh, God has asked you to give and asked me to give and all of us to give to help support the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ through First United Methodist Church. And later in the service, You'll be invited to bring those forward. If you're not ready this week, you can bring it next week. You can also, those of you online, can also go online to fill out your card. Or if you prefer to do that uh, yourself, you can do that as well. There's a Connect card that we have in the bulletin every week, and that's important. We ask you to tell us who you are and what your needs are and how you'll be serving God this next week. So there's two sides, and we encourage you to fill out both of those. And you can place that in the offering plate as it comes by this morning later in the service. Now let us center our thoughts as we worship together to hear the tolling of the hour by the historic church bell that was cast in 1851. It's a symbol of God's faithfulness to all generations and calls us to worship. I invite you to stand as you are able for this beautiful hymn of praise for all the saints. It's in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 711. Will you stand as we sing together?
let us pray. Eternal God, we praise your holy name for all the saints through the ages who have faithfully witnessed to your love and have remained steadfast in the faith. Teach us to follow their example, to provide for the poor in body and spirit, to support and comfort those who grieve, to advocate for those who have no voice or vote, and to affirm those who seek a deeper faith, and to cherish and learn from the compassionate and caring ways they lived out the love of Jesus day by day. And now in this holy worship time, fill us anew with your holy presence as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. I invite us to affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed that's printed in the bulletin. Let us unite our hearts in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship at Atlanta First United Methodist Church. I am Jasmine Smothers, I'm the lead pastor, and it is my joy and my honor to welcome you to worship today. Here at Atlanta First, we exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. And we want to be your partner in developing your discipleship through worship, serve, grow, and engage engage. So at this time, I invite you to take out the connect cards that are in your bulletins and on one side to let us know that you are here because relationships are so important to us. And on the other side, let us know how you are going to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world this week through worship, serve, grow, and engage. Be sure to place these in the offering plates when they come, or you can bring them during communion. We, this today, as Pastor Walter has told you, is one of the very special worship services in the life of the church. And we want you to feel welcome and to participate in worship in whatever way the Holy Spirit leads you to participate. And don't forget that this week you might worship, serve, grow, and engage through volunteering at MAC, through um, through uh, Midtown Assistance, and through uh, Safe House this week. So be sure to look at your Connect cards and to worship, serve, grow, and engage in those ways. Now we turn our hearts and our minds to worship, for this is indeed the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen?
Amen. <laughs> In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. As we continue in worship today, we have the blessing of consecrating new flower urns this morning. Every time we bring something new into the tabernacle, into the place of worship that will serve as a part of the worship service, we consecrate it to God. And so we want to ask the family of Reverend Holda Wilson and Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker to come forward, our lay leader, and Mr. Wayne Pierce, and uh, uh, the leader of our altar guild, Mrs. Car Carol Colley. Our flower urns are well used. Actually, I want to ask Mr. Bill Brewer to um, join us as well. Um, he uh, provides for us the beautiful flowers that you see each week. And uh, we want to give thanks for him as we do this as well. Um, for his, uh, into his ministry, celebrate his ministry among us today. Today, these flower urns are presented to God for use in this church to help us remember that we worship the Almighty God. And they are presented today in memory of Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker by Reverend Holda Wilson and family. We present these flower urns to be consecrated to the glory of Almighty God and for the service in this church in memory of Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker. We accept, we accept these, these flower urns as the sacred trust, trust and, and will guard, guard and use them reverently in loving memory of Mr. Mr. Joe, Joe Lewis Tucker. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these flower urns to the glory of God and in memory of God's servant, Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Let us pray. Most loving God, without you, no words or works of ours have meaning. Accept the gift of our hands as symbols of our devotion. Grant us your blessing as we have consecrated these gifts to your glory that they may be an enduring witness before all people, and that our lives may be consecrated in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Carol, let us place these flower urns in memory of Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker, given by Reverend Holda Wilson, as we celebrate the glory of God through the ministry of flowers in this congregation. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Thank you. And for those of you who may be visiting with us today, uh, Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker is... Um, my stepfather and my friend who passed away this past April. And so now we move into a celebration of our saints today. 
you may find the names of the saints in your bulletin on the communion liturgy insert. The pastel, Paschal candle is lit today in memory of all of our saints, the ones whose names we call today and the ones who are on our hearts and minds this day. As we read each name, you will hear the bell of the organ and you are invited to stand for those whom you have loved and continue to love dearly. We remember today Miss Vicki Bass. We remember and give thanks today for Mrs. Tosca Bodenheimer. We remember and give thanks today for Mrs. Lillian Deacons Wyatt Timberlake. We remember and give thanks today for Mrs. Sani Denard. We remember and give thanks today for Mr. Ed Gerard. We remember and give thanks today for Mrs. Harriet Head. We remember and give thanks today for Mr. Jack Head. We remember and give thanks today for Ms. Margaret Kirby. We remember and give thanks today for Mrs. Joe Smithson. We remember and give thanks today for Mr. Joe Lewis Tucker. And we remember and give thanks today for Miss Mary Wilson. We thank God for the lives and the legacy of these saints, and we continue to live with gratitude and with faith, knowing that this great cloud of witnesses, this great cloud of witnesses, cheers us on and helps us run this race of life together. Thanks be to God. For these we remember today, O oh God, both those whose names we've called and those whom we remember in our hearts and on our minds this day. Lord, we thank you for the great cloud of witnesses. And we thank you, O oh God, for the ways in which you remind us through them that your promises are true and that you will never leave us nor forsake us and that you continue to give us the strength so that we might be grateful people who live out of an abundance of faith. Oh God, we cannot praise you enough this day and we cannot praise you enough in the days that will come. For we know that it is through our praise that we will be able to put one foot in front of another, that we will be able to get up when missing them is just too much to bear. For you created them, you gave them to us, and we now return them to you, O oh God, giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Amen. At the close of the service today, we invite each family to take a candle and an ornament that is a comforting angel 
For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. This comforting angel also has your loved one's name on it, so that this Christmas and in the days ahead, you might know that this great cloud of witnesses remains to strengthen us, to keep us, and to help us run on to see what the end is going to be. Amen? Amen. 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 There's an old song that says, if anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going soon. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> As we celebrate that we live to be with God, we come to this time of prayer. This is the time in our worship service where we give thanks to God for all the things that God has done and all the ways that God has kept us. And we lift our prayers and confession this morning. You will find a prayer card in your pew racks. And for those of you who are worshiping online, you can email your prayers to prayers at atlantafirstumc.org or you can send them via direct message or right there um, in the chat if you are on Facebook Live this morning. For we know that prayer changes things, that prayer changes us. <laughs> and gets us closer to God. The altar rail is open, won't you come? Let us remember those who are on our prayer list this morning, our church family and our extended church family and friends. We want to be sure this morning to remember Ruth Richardson, uh, Dorothy Ann Turnipseed, Gerald Stacy, Reverend Holda Wilson, and so many more that are on our prayer list this morning. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, we are so grateful for the gift of this day. Oh God, we are grateful that you meet us in this place over and over and over and over again. Oh God, we give thanks that on this All Saints Sunday, that you have gifted us with the life and the legacy of these, our saints, this day. Oh God, we remember all of those who have passed along our way and who continue that in their memory to push us forth and to remind us to be people who are full of gratitude and full of faith. Oh God, we thank you this day 
We thank you that you have allowed us to wake up this morning, that you saw fit to blow the breath of life into us one more time. And you brought us into this place without having to risk life or limb to worship you, oh God. We give thanks that you allow us to be comfortable even while you call us out of our comfort zones. We give thanks, oh God, this day for the country that we live in, for our neighbors, for our friends and our family, oh God, and that you continue to remind us that in the midst of it all, you walk with us and you talk with us and you lead us along the way. Lord, there's so many prayers to offer up to you this morning. And yet we know that you are already ahead of us and that none of this has caught you by surprise. So God, help us to lean on you and to seek you for guidance, for comfort, for strength, for healing as we move along this journey called life, oh God. Allow us to sing truthfully and with prayer and with praise, oh God, that it is indeed well with our souls because we know where our help comes from. We know that our help comes from you, oh God. We know that you are at work in our lives, that you are making a way out of no way, that you are providing for us when we think that we're done for, oh God, that you are healing us when the doctor called for us to be dead oh God we give thanks to you for you are God and you are still on the throne and you are God all by yourself and you don't need our help so forgive us we pray forgive us for the things that we have done that we ought not do And forgive us for the things that we didn't do that we should have done, oh God. Forgive us when we have dishonored you. Forgive us when we have doubted you. Forgive us, oh God, and free us for joyful obedience. Free us so that we might be your hands and feet in this world and be transforming agents. For you, oh God. It is well with my soul, my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. With my soul. Yeah. 
This morning that God will do exactly what God said God will do come on I think you can do better than that today how many of you believe that God will do what God says God can do I mean because there's some of us walking around here Wayne who act like God is dead and who act like God cannot be trusted and who act like what God said is just poof, a pipe dream <laughs> But how many of you know that God will do just what God says? <clears throat> come on, come on. He will do just for what he exciting day in the life of our congregation. It marks a new season 
Those of you who received um, Thursday Thoughts yesterday, this week, will know that on Wednesday, we received the very first of the proposals for our affordable housing dream. God will do just what God says. So as we move into this new phase, this next phase, we ask that you would be in prayer and that you will be involved in the listening sessions that are to come and in the task groups that are to come. And if you have any special expertise, we need to know that <laughs> so that we might put your gifts to work with God. Our saints remind us that God is faithful. Our saints remind us that God has been faithful and that God is faithful and that God will continue to be faithful. And sometimes, Pastor Walter, we forget. Sometimes we think that that God who has done miracles and that Jesus who has saved somebody else's life has gotten tired and deaf and won't listen to us and isn't at work with us anymore. And this is exactly where we encounter the prophet Habakkuk today. You see, Habakkuk was a prophet just like Jeremiah and Isaiah and many of the others, yet there is something different about Habakkuk than Jeremiah and Isaiah and all the others. Habakkuk is not afraid to question God. And is not afraid to ask the questions that are on many of our hearts and minds. You see, I believe that Habakkuk was a little bold. <laughs> but sometimes our boldness pays off. The other prophets brought God's word to the people. Habakkuk brings the people's questions to God. As we start the Building a Beautiful Neighborhood series today, we remember that Mr. Rogers, that Fred Rogers was first a pastor. And it was because he did not like what he saw on television that he created a new neighborhood. Do you remember the land of make-believe <laughs> where Mr. Rogers could make everything okay? Where he could teach us how to mourn where he could teach us how to doubt, where he could teach us how to get along with one another, where he could teach us that no matter what anybody else said about us, that we were the beloved that God created and that he liked us just the way we are. Mr. Rogers once said that I believe that appreciation is a holy thing. That when we look for what's best in a person, we happen to be with at that moment, we're doing what God does all the time. So in loving and appreciating our neighbor, we're participating in something sacred. Today, we explore what it means to live in a vision and what it means to have a vision of gratitude and of faith. 
Hear now these words from the prophet Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The vision that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me sing wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law became slack and justice never prevails. It seems the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. So God, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks to the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous, the righteous live by their faith. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The first time I met my stepfather, who I didn't know was going to be my stepfather, <laughs> I was early in my middle school years, and we all know those years are interesting. I was a little awkward, Dr. Bob, and very headstrong. I mean, I've always been headstrong. These are the years in which you've heard me talk about that my mother took the door off of my room because she needed to remind me that I didn't own anything. And I was really not that happy about meeting this guy. But he saw something in me that I didn't really recognize in myself upon our first meeting. He said, Jasmine, I think you like the Bible. I think you love God. And so I want you to know that I love God too. And my favorite part of the scripture is from the prophet Isaiah. And it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not faint. He always reminded me to wait for it. You see, our saints teach us a lot about God. They've had some experiences that we have not had, and they, see, they have seen some things that we have not yet seen. And even when they speak to us in our dreams or in our talking to God or in our candles or in the make-believe neighborhood or wherever they are, they remind us to wait for it. And that in waiting, we are to be full of gratitude 
and practice our faith. Most of us only know the second chapter and the fourth verse of Habakkuk because Paul, he repeats it over and over again in Galatians and in other places. And he reminds us over and over again that the just shall live by faith. But am I just? Because it seems like everybody around me hasn't seen justice take place. And, and my faith, sometimes it gets a little flimsy because I forget to look beyond what I can see. Habakkuk is a prophet during a time where God's people, the Judeans, are being attacked. And Habakkuk has some questions about this. He wants to know where is God in the midst of all of the stuff that's going on in my world? God, are you allowing these Babylonians to attack us, to punish us? Are you trying to teach us a lesson? Why are you so quiet? Why are you so far away? Why won't you show up and fix this? Why won't you make this a little bit easier? Why won't you make the cash flow the way I think the cash should flow? Why won't you make the jobs come the way I think the jobs should come? Why won't you make the people show up the way I think the people are supposed to show up? Why can't we get along with each other? Don't you have something to say about this? Don't you have something to do about this? How long do I have to cry for help? You said you would never leave me, that you were the ever-present help in the time of trouble. How long do I have to take this violence in all around me and to me? Why don't you see the wrongdoing? Why don't you see the trouble? Why aren't you doing anything about it? Destruction and violence is what I see. People arguing and fighting is what I see. I don't see any justice anywhere. And it seems like there are more wicked people than righteous ones. Maybe if Habakkuk was writing today, he would say, Lord, I can't tell the church people from the regular people. I don't know whether these are Jesus followers or people followers. I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're in the midst of this. Those who are supposed to know you, they don't resemble anything about you. You said you would never leave me nor forsake me, but I'm struggling and I'm in trouble. Where are you? God answers the complaint. In the first chapter, in the fifth verse, he says, look around. Take it in. Look long and hard. Be astonished. <laughs> For a work is being done in your days that you would not believe if you were told. Yes. You have not been very faithful people, and in fact, you have been pretty wicked people, and you will be punished 
I, I've given you a lot of chances to get it right. I've told you over and over again that it needs to be my way and not your way. I've told you over and over again that worship needs to be what flows from you and not doubt and not criticism and not all these other things that are coming. I have given you models. I have sent you prophets. What else do you want me to do? And then Habakkuk says, well, that's not exactly the answer I was looking for. <laughs> so I'm going to try this again. I'm going to climb in the watchtower. You see, in those days, the cities were fortified with walls. And at various points in the walls, there were towers that you would climb into to see if the enemy was coming. But Habakkuk, he climbs in the watchtower. In the Eugene Peterson's translation of the message, it says, I'm bracing for the worst. I'll climb to the lookout tower and scan the horizon. I'll wait to see what God says and if he'll answer my complaint. And then God surprises us all. And reminds us that he's already given us the plan. So since we keep missing it, here are the instructions. Write this down. This vision that I have given you, write it down because you seem to not be able to understand what's happening if you just keep it in your head. So write it down. And write it so plainly on the tablets that if somebody is running past those tablets, they'll be able to see what the vision is. Write the vision and make it plain that they that wait on the Lord and they that are running through their stuff and they that are running from their stuff can see that there is still a vision. Write it. Make it plain. So every Everyone will know. We like that part. The next part is why are you acting like the vision is dead? Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end to all the nonsense that's going on in our lives. And it does not lie. And if it seems to take its time, Wait for it. See, when I was growing up, the old church ladies, they would talk about tarrying in the presence of God. And it seemed like they were just spending way too much time in church. <laughs> they would make their way to the altar rails, and you could hear the canes just... And they would tarry and tarry and tarry and tarry 
And all of a sudden, somebody would go to screaming. And I was like, guess I'm not going to get dinner tonight. And somebody would go to screaming, and if you leaned in just a little bit, you might hear them scream, Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! I've been set free! I am free indeed! God has healed me! God has made a way out of no way! God is here! But I have lunch plans, preacher. And we haven't even got to communion yet. Some things come through the faith that is required in the waiting. Write that down. Some things come in the faith that is required in the waiting. You see... God needed to remind the Judeans just like God needs to remind us today that it ain't over until God says it's over. <laughs> and that some things do require gratitude and do require faith. And that some things are not about us. And that some things are bigger than us. And that God will be God no matter what. Habakkuk was concerned about justice. Hmm. He was concerned that God would not make things right. He was concerned that the wicked were going to keep on being wicked and they were going to get away with it. He was concerned that the people who were attacking the people of God were going to get away with it and that God was not going to be concerned about it and that God would not do anything about it. Mr. Rogers taught us that if we wait and we look for what's best in God's people, if we look with gratitude and we wait in faith, that the neighborhood might be a little bit more beautiful than we thought. See, I like Habakkuk because he has questions that need answers. <laughs> And he's not afraid to ask them. He's not talking about God behind God's back and saying, I wish he would, da 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 da, da and I wonder if da, da 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 and I heard. No, he goes straight to the source and say, I need answers to my questions. When are you going to do your job? Vision is a reliable pledge that God will act in the future. And the question for us is, do we have the patience to wait on the Lord? See, all kinds of crazy things happen because we won't wait for it. We won't tarry. We're in the instant, instant society where I want it and I want it now. And God doesn't work in the I want it and want it now way. God works in the best way. God can see what we don't see. God understands that there's an end. And God understands that there is a perfect time. And God doesn't go by my wife. 
much. And God doesn't go by our wishes. God is God all by God's self. God says, write the vision. Don't forget what I'm telling you. Make it plain. Tell everybody about it. And make sure those that are in a hurry. <laughs> can see it too. <laughs> the power and promise of God is reliable. You can trust God. But we can't live on the coattail of our saints. My stepmother, ta my stepfather taught me a lot about how to live he taught me a lot about how to be grateful. He taught me how to fold the flag that flies outside of our home because he was a proud veteran. He taught me how to be patient and kind and generous. He taught me how to be calm when I wanted to fly off the handle. He was large and in charge and the most gentle human being that you have ever come in contact with. And today, I have to stand on my own two feet. Today, I have to remember him and give thanks for him and know that he is in this great cloud of witnesses and that he sees the vision and that he's pushing me on and pushing us on and blessing us and making sure we don't run out of fuel and making sure we don't forget who God is and making sure that we keep the vision in mind, making sure that I know 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 that God is but I have to trust God for myself and as we remember these saints, we remember what they taught us, that our Sunday school teachers and people who encouraged us and people who gave us life when we were ready to give up. We remember them and thank them for what they've given us. But it's up to us whether we're going to stand in faith. Write the vision, make it plain, that they may run and not faint. Though the vision is only for a while, it shall speak. Today, we have an opportunity to take God up on God's word. 
The vision has been written. The vision that we, that this church might become for the community a place of refuge, a place where people might find home, where they might find a family, where they might find an affordable place to live, where they might find a school for their children that is top notch, that they might find the resources that they need to get through hard times through Midtown assistance. God has written the vision, but do you believe it? We, we, got, a, we got a plan, Wayne. We got a plan on Wednesday. It was beautiful and it came all packaged in ways that were mind blowing. And it, it surprised me because I got a little choked up and I got a little excited. And I realized, Wayne, that maybe I was doubting God a little bit. So, God, I'm sorry. Hmm. I trust you. This is my generosity card. It was hard for me this year because many of you know that I've been ill and if you've ever been ill, those hospital bills will kill you. But this is a step of faith because I believe the vision and I believe God. It's your turn. Are you gonna join me? If so, bring your generosity card now and put it on this altar rail so that God might receive our it is so. And as you Turn in your generosity cards. I want you also to pick up this gift from the church. And it's a bookmark that reminds you of how we're living this vision at 360 Peachtree Street. The prophet said, God, when will you act? And God said, I already have. When will you? Now is the time. Won't you come? Won't you come?
Thank you, O oh Lord, for these who have said it is so. Yes. Thank you, O oh God, that your it is so <laughs> is the most important it is so that we might ever experience. O oh God, take these now, our gifts to you. Take them, O oh God, and consecrate them and multiply them so that we might be at work in your kingdom for such a time as this. O oh God, many of these represent a huge step of faith, and for that we are incredibly grateful. And God, we are grateful for those who have yet to come and those who will continue to serve and to pledge in this community of faith. Thank you for writing the vision and making it plain. Enable us, O oh God, to wait for it and to work for it as people of gratitude and of faith. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Now we turn now to rece receive our gifts of tithe and offering. We give generously to God because God has been so generous unto us. And we give back to God a portion of what God has given to us because we know that nothing is ours and that it is all God's. We encourage you to give generously so that we can continue to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those who are sick and in prison, and to be the hands and feet of Christ in this city and beyond. Ushers, won't you come?
You may be seated. As we continue in worship this morning, the invitation is to Christ's table, not to the United Methodist Church's table, not to Atlanta First table, but to Christ's table. As we prepare for this holy meal, if there are any who might come for the first time to know Jesus, let us know. If there are those who might come to join with this community of faith, let us know. And if there are those who just need an extra, I need to know that Jesus is with me, let us know. Pastor Walter, lead us to the table. When Pastor Jasmine invites us to come forward, we, uh, the ushers will guide you if you'll come and stand at the communion rail and cup your hands in the form of a cross. The server will come and place the wafer in your hand and then uh, will be followed by the cup. And Pastor Jasmine will direct us to take communion because we take it as a community. So we'll take it together and then she will dismiss us from the table and the next group will come. If you uh, require gluten-free product, if you'll tell your server, we have that for you as well. Now hear this invitation. Awesome. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us offer our silent prayers to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us he was having an ordinary Passover meal with his 12 favorite misfits and he took the ordinary bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the ordinary cup just like they had done years and years and years and years before. And he said something weird this time. He said, thanks be to God. He gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. O oh God, renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you. Vicki Bass, Tosca Bodenheimer, Lillian Deacons, Wyatt Timberlake, Sandy Denard, Ed Gerard, Harriet Head, Jack Head, Margaret Kirby, Joe Smithson, Joe Lewis Tucker, and Mary Wilson. And Lord, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, Strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And by your spirit, O oh God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We invite our servers to come forth at this time. And we have several clergy here today. If you would like to participate in serving this morning, please come forward.
Do you know that we eat this bread because Jesus loves us so much? And we drink this juice to remind us that Jesus loves us so much. So everybody take now and eat. And take now and drink. And go forth sharing the love of God with everyone you come in contact with. As these leave, may others come. When we wonder how long it will be until God answers our prayers, we are to remember, we are to remember that the righteous live by faith. As you take this bread and as you drink this juice, remember that God will never leave you nor forsake you, and we are called to live by faith. Rise and go in peace. God reminds us that God is creating a new heaven and a new earth, and the former things shall pass away. So be glad and rejoice forever in what God is creating. Take this bread and eat. Take this juice and drink. And give praise to God for all that God is creating and for God, how God is sustaining us. Now rise and go in peace.
the psalmist said, make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth and worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his praise presence with singing. So know that the Lord is God and is good and enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Take this bread and eat. Take this juice and drink. Giving thanks to God who is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Rise and go in peace, praising the Lord. Have all who choose to be served been served? Amen. Thanks be to God. Friends, <laughs> this has been the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This has been a day worthy of rejoicing in. Amen. Thank you for being in worship today. Thank you for giving your time to God today. Thank you for being generous with your resources unto God today. Families of those who, um, who, for whom we've celebrated today, be sure to take your candle, not the candle holder, but the candle and your ornament. <laughs> and let us all remember and give thanks to God for our saints with gratitude as we look forward in the vision with faith. Amen? Stand and receive this benediction. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Most High God, be all glory, honor, and praise. And the people of God saying, Amen.